A grim estimate today on the economic impact of the Ebola crisis. The World Bank has calculated the price tag and is predicting it could top $32 billion in West Africa alone by the end of next year. That's if the disease continues to spread. This comes as five U.S. airports say that they will screen for Ebola on passengers arriving from West Africa. And on the same day that the first Ebola patient diagnosed here in the U.S., Thomas Eric Duncan died in a Dallas hospital following a long struggle with the virus. Duncan may have exposed up to 50 people to the Ebola virus in Dallas. So far, none of them have shown signs of illness, but the nation's hospitals and airports are on high alert. It's the fear factor that the World Bank referred to in its report, calling for immediate action in the hardest hit countries. Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone to stop the epidemic. Doing so would discourage other African countries from closing their borders, grounding airline travel, and choking commercial activity there. World Bank President Jim Kim said today the enormous economic cost of the current outbreak could have been avoided by prudent ongoing investment in health systems. And that's the point Secretary of State John Kerry was trying to make as he confirmed a commitment of resources and dollars by the United States. Ebola is an urgent global crisis that demands an urgent global response. Uh, the United States has intensified every aspect of our engagement, and that includes providing Ebola treatment units, recruiting first responders, and supplying a uh, critical set of uh, medical equipment. Earlier this week, an NBC News freelance photographer arrived in Omaha, Nebraska for treatment after he tested positive for Ebola while working in Liberia. In the United States, one other patient had been previously treated and released in Omaha, and three others, including one who remains hospitalized, have been treated in Atlanta. In Europe, a total of eight people have been treated. Two of the three in Spain have died. No drugs or vaccines have been approved by the FDA to treat Ebola, and only very limited supplies of the drugs being tested are available. The stock of Chimerix, which makes the drug used by Duncan, dropped today following the announcement of his death. That same drug is also being given to NBC's freelance photographer in Nebraska. But until there's a drug or a vaccine to fight Ebola, the costs of containing it will steadily climb. John Panzer joins us now to talk more about the World Bank's economic assessment of the Ebola epidemic. He's the director of macroeconomics and fiscal management practice at the World Bank Group, and he's one of the authors of the study we referred to earlier. Uh, sir, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, I gather, correct me if I'm wrong, that much of the cost uh, that you describe under a kind of worst-case scenario, $33 billion, concentrated in West Africa, uh, is traceable to what you describe as the aversion behavior that people would engage in in those economies. In other words, the economy fundamentally shuts down as people shutter factories, don't travel there, are afraid to do business in those nations. Could that aversion behavior lead to the collapse of those countries? Uh, yes. Uh, in some ways, this uh, crisis is not contained in the very short term. Uh, we can anticipate an enormous cost for these countries. Right now, for these countries, we estimate that for 2015, the cost, the price cost, would be about $800 million if this crisis is not contained. This is a very significant amount of money for economies that, in total, have a GDP of $12 billion. Uh, John, you also write in your report that you have two scenarios. There's the high Ebola and low Ebola, and that has a factor in this um, price tag that you've put on the uh, cost of the Ebola crisis. Talk, talk us through the high and low scenarios. Well, I think the, the most scary scenario is the high, high case scenario, in which if the crisis is not contained in this country, in these three countries, there's a very likely probability that Ebola will spread to neighboring countries or to other countries in the world as we see now. But of course, the most vulnerable countries for the spread of the disease are the neighboring countries because they are the most connected and also because they have health systems that will be very stretched to cope with the disease. In that context, if aversion behavior moves into the broader 
Western Africa region, you have to consider that just the economy of Nigeria is 40 times larger than the economy of these three countries combined. So if this crisis would evolve into other countries and would lead to aversion behavior across other Western African economies, mm -hmm. we could estimate then a very high cost in terms of lower economic growth, which transmits into that $33 billion over 2014 and 15 that you referred to. That's what I was going to ask you, because you earlier cited a number of something like $800 million, which is uh, staggering in its own right. But I was going to ask you how we get to that 32, 33 billion, uh, that is sort of the headline number that uh, people are, are throwing around today. And it is reduced economic output. This is mostly uh, West Africa. What happens if this, uh, if this disease moves more broadly global? How does that lever up the potential cost? Uh, I think that in that case, we have to consider whether this is going to lead or not to aversion behavior. At the beginning of the program, you said the cost of this, of treating the disease and of treating the patients and isolating them is significant, but it's not staggering in terms of the broader economy. However, if aversion behavior moves to any country, then the cost could escalate enormously. Take a developed country, we think that in places like the United States or Europe, where you have very strong security and health systems to contain the crisis, you will have a price tag. But if you avoid mm -hmm. aversion behavior, the economic cost will be very contained, of course. All right, Mr. Panzer, thank you very much. We'll, of course, be watching this story, as will you, uh, over the months ahead. John Panzer of the World Bank.